Science is everywhere, but it's especially in this next segment. There's like a lot of it. Let's take a look. Today, I'm at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. To make it here, you have to have a bold vision, an eye for style, and lots and lots of microbes. To find out what bacteria has to do with fashion, today, I'm gonna to be talking to Dr. Theon Shiros. So, I certainly never thought I'd have a career or be working in fashion, so to speak. Really, I am a scientist first and foremost. But in truth, STEM has everything to do with fashion. All the clothes we wear were engineered. You engineer stretch, you engineer color, you engineer waterproofing. These are all engineering and chemical principles applied. To show us how these principles come together, I need Theanne to spill the tea, sweet tea to be exact. So I have to ask you, what is that? This may very well be our fiber factory of the future. It smells like tea. Uh, it's sweet tea, and those sweet tea are feeding bacteria, and those bacteria are spinning us new materials. Wow. Deanne explains how her lab uses microbes, yeast, and bacteria to create fiber for a leather alternative, all part of her research focusing on designing and engineering new environmentally conscious materials to reach climate goals. A lot of people don't realize the impact that fashion has on the environment, and that's where sustainability comes in. Indeed. The fashion industry is one of the most environmentally destructive industries in the world. It's actually responsible for 10% of global carbon budget, second leading source of global wastewater, and huge amounts of solid municipal waste. Did you always know that you wanted to work in science or fashion, or did you know that you wanted to work in both? Oh no, I wanted to be an Olympic tumbler. What? <laughs> While Theanne may not be doing somersaults today, she and her students hope their microbe-grown materials will turn the fashion world upside down in the future. So here we are. Wow, this is really cool. So what are we looking at here? Well, I set up a little bit of a process, biofabrication, so we can kind of see the moving parts of how we go from microbe to textile. That process, the ant shows me, starts with feeding the bacteria a carbon source, which is the sugar, and a nitrogen source, which is the tea. And as the bacteria eats, it creates cellulose, which sits atop the liquid as a hydrated biofilm called a pellicle. I think it looks like skin. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Leather comes to mind, right? Yeah, it, it, it does come to mind. It looks like a hide. And just like how animal hides need to go through a tanning process before it becomes leather, this pellicle needs to go through a plant-based lecithin emulsion process before it becomes... This Voila. Yeah. But this is sort of the base bio leather. It looks, it looks and feels amazing. Can I see some of the yes. things you've made? Yeah, these are just a few examples of what we made. We have a little card holder here, a clutch, um, some mini bags. So really the bio leather can, it can be used in so many ways. I guess that traditional leather has been used. Yeah, and the idea is to do all of those same things with a significantly lower environmental and human health impact. I feel like one of these days I'm gonna see these products on the runway. Well, if that happens, you'll be sure to have a seat right up front in the cultured section with the microbes. <laughs> Good one. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really. I've seen this one over a hundred times.